Following the Middle Ages, the Renaissance was considered as the period of rebirth which marks the revival of the political, economic, scientific, and even more so, the artistic and cultural spheres of the society. To introduce us to the music of the Renaissance, here is composer, arranger, writer, performer, and also a faculty member of the UP College of Music, Professor Krina Kayabyev. Good day, everyone. My name is Krina Kayabyev, and today I will be sharing with you a few ideas about Renaissance music. First of all, thank you very much, UP Singing Ambassadors, for inviting me to be part of your concert. Before jumping into the aspects of the Renaissance period, let's look back to a very familiar situation that humanity faced a little more than 500 years ago, the Black Death. This bubonic and pneumonic plague combination caused the deaths of about one third of Europe's population and about 60% of the world's population. Strange black swellings about the size of an egg are found in the armpits or groin. Victims contract fever, spit blood, develop boils, and had internal bleeding. The first wave began between 1347 to 1400. Six more waves happened between 1400 and 1500. Difficult to imagine and feel how much worse this pandemic was back then. Also hard to resist the possibility that our current pandemic can go on and on for years now, and worse without proper governance and developments in medicine. Now, besides the pandemic, a lot of other social, economic, and political situations affected and influenced ideas about art and music. During the later years of the medieval period, there was the Hundred Years' War between the English and the French. By this time, science and secularism became more relied on over religious and supernatural explanations. This developing attitude of acknowledging one's senses rather than solely relying on the church as the ultimate authority in faith, intellectual, and political affairs serves as a precursor to the humanist values harbored later on in the Renaissance period. As what most of us, well, I hope, have been experiencing these last couple of months, we can say that music making never stopped. Developments in notation and compositional techniques continued on during that last 500 years. Let's have a glimpse on some of these pre-Renaissance musical aspects that were carried over and developed further in the next centuries, becoming the standard compositional techniques of the period. First is organum. The simplest way to producing harmony was adding a drone, either the same interval until the end or adding a fifth above. And then from the ninth to the 13th centuries, two or more singing voices were added. Of course, these combinations have to comply with the given rules of the period. It can be parallel, can be oblique, can be contrary. Moving towards the 14th and 15th centuries, we'd often find the term cantus firmus. It is usually an existing melody, like a plain chant, which becomes a basis of a new polyphonic work. This main melody was often found at the bottom of, say, a three-part vocal work, becoming another term for a tenor. Now the two lines above create independent melodies while moving in interaction with the other vocal parts. In close reference to polyphony is counterpoint. And so with these, you have a cantus firmus, you have interrelated melodies forming a polyphonic structure, you have contrapuntal movements which aid in the horizontal direction of the piece, you have the recipe for a polyphonic Renaissance work. Another driving essential element that became important in group vocal music is rhythm. The French around 1320 were innovating what is called Ars Nova or New Art. Included here is the writing system of mensural notation. In a nutshell, a piece of music is structured according to divisions of three or two. This was the precursor of the time signature. 
Then you have fixed forms and trecento forms. Though first conceived as monophonic or solo songs, these forms such as AB or AAB or ABA were also employed in polyphonic songs. But by this time, the treble melody becomes more dominant, becoming the cantus in this context. Some of these fixed forms include the chanson, the rondo, the ballata, and the early form of madrigal. The development of vocal music continued to grow. Soon enough, crucial occurrences marked the coming of a new way of thinking. This became the time when Florence became the city-state known as the cradle of the Renaissance. The Medicis became the most powerful and influential family. Two of the most prolific visual artists were Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo. The printing press became a major means to the propagation of literature, ideas, as well as music. Patrons became important financiers of their arts, rather than a central church. Perspective became a key concept and practice that led to more realistic and naturalistic works of art. People of a particular region speak the vernacular rather than the Latin language commonly used in the previous period. The Reformation movement led by Martin Luther challenged the practices of the Catholic Church. Now on to more of the musical styles that became transitional and descriptive phrases from the Renaissance. The interest to add more vocal sonorities and singing chants led to the idea of polyphony, or rather, Renaissance polyphony. Notation systems, song forms, and harmonic rules resorted to a new way of composing and transmitting music. From crude, harsh, open harmonies, casual dissonance, parallel fifths, and octaves, the accepted music turned into having full, sweet, and controlled sound. While medieval composers tended to contrast the separate strands of music, Renaissance composers aimed to blend them together, working gradually through the piece and attending to all parts simultaneously. Counterpoint and harmony were utilized to create a sense of direction, tension, and resolution in Renaissance polyphonic music. And so, despite differences in usage and purpose, compositions for both sacred and secular music share similar compositional devices that are rooted in this Renaissance polyphonic color and texture. For the sacred genres, you have the Lutheran chorale, the English anthem, the metrical psalms of the Calvinist church, and the masses of the Catholic church. Polyphonic music had a new face through the music of Giovanni Pierluigi da Palestrina. His music has been described to have captured the essence of the Catholic response to the Reformation. Here is a passage from Pope Marcellus Mass. Listen and take note of the following descriptions. Consonant harmonies are heard mostly on every two beats to demonstrate sonority. Consecutive leaps, more than three, are avoided. Each voice has a great variety of rhythms, and text declamation is used, using melismas to significant syllables. Now with national secular songs and madrigals by the 16th century, they introduced the idea of music as a dramatic art. With the effect of music printing that allowed wider dissemination, music began to be sold as a commodity. With forms of group singing such as the madrigal, new ways of text declamation, imagery, expressivity, and dramatization were explored. A variety of homophonic and contrapuntal textures that overlap and the addition of voices from four, five, to six or more toward the end of the century were all employed. This is an air composed by John Doland entitled Flow My Tears. Very much known to the Elizabethans, this is accompanied by the lute. Claude Lejeune composed this piece entitled Revecine Venier du Plantain. 
This features the type of French compositional technique called musique mesurée, where French composers wanted to imitate the rhythmic accentuation of their language. English had Thomas Morley and Thomas Wilkes, who extensively used the device word thinking in composing and coordinating the music for the meaning of the text. This is demonstrated in this famous madrigal, Asvesta Was. This composer, Claudin de Saint-Messi, wrote this track called Tante Kelvin Blanc, a kind of chanson which was part of the 50 collections published by Pierre Apanel. Another chanson is Clément Genecan's All Jolie Joux. With such a light-hearted mood, its first line is translated to it is merry sport to play at tumbling. But before the Opsa performs this one, here first is Omanium Mysterium by Tomas Luis de Victoria from Spain. The Victoria would employ melodies of his motets to his masses as what he did with this particular motet to Misa Omanium Mysterium. Ladies and gentlemen, the UP Singing Ambassadors.